Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we are going to be looking at the much anticipated Leatherman Ratchet Driver, which are now available in stores. I actually have a couple of more of these on the way. I ordered mine from Blade HQ, uh, literally the hour that they hit the website there. And Blade HQ sold out pretty quickly of these. But because of where I'm at, uh, logistically, it's just going to take a few extra days for me to get the ones that I ordered off Blade HQ. So I checked around local to see what stores might have them in stock and I, I lucked out and REI had them in stock. So I drove up to Houston to go pick one up and we're gonna get into all the ins and outs of this Leatherman Ratchet Driver. Okay, so there's a, there's a couple of things that we wanna take note of, first of all. This particular Ratchet Driver is made in Taiwan. Is that showing up there? I can't even tell if that's focusing in. Uh, made in Taiwan. So I know that's going to be an area of contention for a lot of people because this is not a USA made product. For me, however, that's really not an issue. I know and have actually, I own a lot of tools from, uh, from Taiwan or Taiwanese manufactured and they have held up phenomenally. So I'm really not concerned about that. The second thing that we've got here on the box is specifically states that this is only going to be covered by a two-year warranty and not Leatherman's 25-year warranty. That is actually something that I expected because this is a mechanism with moving parts. It's going to be subjected to torque loads. Uh, it's actually, I just, they would be foolish in my opinion if they had a 25-year warranty on these things because at some point, and I don't know what point that is, I don't know how rugged they are. Until we test them, we're just not going to know. At some point, though, they have the ability to fail simply because they are a driver mechanism. So they're only going to come with a two-year warranty, and that is something that you need to be aware of. This does not come with Leatherman's 25-year warranty. All right, with that, let's get into this thing. Let's get this box opened up first. See if we can't get this little guy out of here and start checking it out. doesn't want to come out of there too well. Oh, it was catching there on the bottom. Okay, so this one says that it runs in at 1.3 grams or 36 point, or excuse me, 1.3 ounces or 36.8 grams, uh, 3.27, which is going to be three and a quarter inches or 8.31 centimeters. So 83 millimeters. Uh, one, two, and three. So fits Leatherman bit drivers, fits quarter inch bit drivers and Leatherman bits and has a three position ratcheting system. So this is gonna be able to fit into an extension, which we're gonna try all that out here pretty soon. So overall, this is gonna be the same stainless steel appears that they make their regular ratchet driver out of. The, the mechanism here for changing over from uh, forward to reverse is gonna be a hard plastic. Seems pretty well constructed. It does have a little bit of play. I wonder if we can catch this on camera exactly how much play this has. So we can't. I can move this back and forth just slightly. It is, it is minimal, but that's also something that I expected with this ratchet driver. It's not the tightest in the world, so that is something to take note of as well. So if we kind of set it here, you can kind of see how much she'll move back and forth. That is one thing that you need to be aware of. Comes embossed with the Leatherman logo down here. And as far as that goes, that's pretty much it. Now, the interior, which let's we'll see if we can light that up a little bit. There's a magnet down at the bottom of it. It's also a very deep well. That's going to be so that it'll allow the use of Leatherman bits. So I'll tell you what, let's bring in some different style bits and we'll see how they work with this. Okay, so I got a several different variety or a variety of different bits. So I got a couple out of my DeWalt set, including a 516th uh, nut driver, have Leatherman bit, I have my extension with the Weha double-sided bit, and I even brought in a set of Victorinox. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to check this into the Leatherman Surge, and we'll look at the fitment on that. And it fits just exactly like the other one does, the regular driver does. So the same amount of play, everything that you're coming to expect as far as fitment for your regular uh, extension. Now the length on these, they're going to be identical. So 
right on the money. It's just going to be, obviously it's going to be a little bit wider. So I measured this out and their, their measurements are actually really accurate. So this is three and a quarter and this is right at five eighths of an inch wide at this point. So we'll see how it fits in the case here in a little while uh, in different varying forms. So it fits quite nicely into there. And then to switch it, you have three modes. So right now in the center, it's locked, but you can see there's there's actually a lot of play here. So let me hold on to this. You can see I can spin that to about the probably about four or five about four or five degrees before it actually catches. So there's some slop in it. It's not completely solid when it's in its locked up position. You can see how much I can turn my surge before it's locking in. And then this should be our reverse. So yep. And if we flip it the other way, well, I'll tell you something, that's a little tight on that uh, reverse mechanism, but it seems to work okay. And there is our, you know, that's a, the, the play in that is actually more than I anticipated. And it's working in combination with, with each other. It's the, it's the play they have in the holder and then the play in the driver itself. So it actually has quite a bit of movement. Wasn't expecting it to be quite quite that much play. But nonetheless, so for our bit drivers, let's check it out. First one, we'll try it out. Actually, we'll try it on the larger one. This should fit just fine. And let me take this out of here. That magnet on there is actually pretty strong. I like that. The the uh, the mechanism down there, or that magnet holds in really, really well. So if we set it now... This is going to be kind of true of the same, the, what you've come to expect from sitting a regular bit into your regular regular extension. It sits a lot deeper than what you will find in a normal extension. So if I pull this out, let's just use this Victorinox as an example. You see how much higher this one sits into what would be a regular extension? This one, because it's going to accept the Leatherman bits, has to be made a little bit deeper. And so you still get the head of the driver out there, but as something to be aware of. So if you have a, of course, if you have to get into something that's really deep, well, maybe you're, maybe you're carrying one of these extra or something. I don't, I don't know. It, it kind of just depends on how you guys decide to load out. And then if we set the nut driver in there, that lockup is really nice on that one as well. And then we'll look at it for the Leatherman driver. So that one will see it in there just fine. Magnet holds well, even on the very thin surface of that 3 16 And if we flip it around, it should be just as well, just as good. So even with the, just a little point of, the, uh, of that uh, combination uh, Phillips driver, the Leatherman bits seem to fit in there just fine. Now, I want to check it against my Weeha bit and see how that one works. This one's going to be a little, sh little thinner point. So it's noticeably uh, less magnetic force it's able to apply onto it because it's just catching the very point of that number one Phillips. But you can see that it holds in there uh, just fine. So as long as that magnet uh, doesn't weaken too much, then it should be just fine. And oh, it's a lot better, obviously, because there's more surface area on that number two. There's a lot better retention with that bit. So now this one is supposed to accept, uh, you're supposed to be able to set it in the quarter and you can just fine. No issue there. All right. Uh, let me, I'll tell you what, let's see if we can't figure out what the tooth count on this is. So we're going to, we'll see how we're going to do this. I think we'll use the DeWalt emblem there and we'll just rotate this around till we can establish how many tooth, how, how many teeth are in this ratchet mechanism. So Bear with me on this one. Uh, well, let me flip it around the other way because I want to turn the other way. Okay. One, two, three. Well, I need to start that over. Hold on. Let me swing around. Let me get it lined up. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 31. I just went twice. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 45. So that's going to be an 8 degree arc swing 
on this ratchet mechanism. I was actually expecting, I don't know why, but I was just anticipating that that was going to be a 60 tooth, but it's a 45 tooth. So that's going to give you that eight degree arc swing. All right, let's, uh, I'll tell you what, let's try it out a little bit, see how well it works just on some light stuff. So I don't have a whole lot of hardware here with me today. So we're going to, and keep in mind, this is not going to be the extent of how much we're going to be testing this ratchet driver. I just, at the time being, this is all I have. I actually intend to probably try to test this to the breaking point and see what it can actually handle. But uh, I got a piece of wood here and just a regular wood screw. I used the awl to kind of pre-drill a couple little holes to help it get started. And let's just see how it operates. I guess it might help if we were in the right direction, wouldn't it? So, oh, that works pretty good. Let me uh, let me set this up on the side here. This is with the Leatherman bit, keep in mind. This is actually not even grabbing that well. I got to tell you, that what a difference that thing makes. We'll see if we can go ahead and seat this thing all the way, and then we'll pull it back out. So that worked just fine. That sits completely flush, and this ratchet driver didn't struggle at all to set that screw. So granted, this is only just a little uh, inch and a half wood screw or an inch and a quarter wood screw. So but it sure makes quick work out of pulling that thing out of there too let's give it one more try in the second hole that we set for it get it preset and i don't even have this opened up because it would make a big difference on torque if i was able to oh yeah that thing works great well so far so good on just some lightweight stuff but when we get it uh, tomorrow, probably, I'm going to try to set up a, a test. Uh, I'm going to have to get a little torque wrench and see if I can't, uh, uh, you know, set up a little test bench, sort of, so that I can kind of test and see how far I can take it on torque. But that thing works just fine. I don't see any issue with it as of right now. So, huh. Initial impression so far, gentlemen, is that this thing is actually pretty good. And keep in mind, that was with uh, a combination Leatherman bit. That wasn't even with a, a true 3D bit. One thing that I want to point out with this is that regular quarter-inch bits, they'll fit fine. And it'll work with this. But I actually prefer, you see how deeply that sits in there. And then if we set the double-sided Weeha bit in there, you can see how much difference that makes. I've done a review on these Weeha bits. I love these because these Weeha bits will actually fit into the regular Leatherman extension as well. And they won't get stuck. You can actually pull them out. And so if you want to check that out, you can check that out here. These are actually phenomenal bits and then they double up. Because of the extra length in that, in that extension, it's, in my opinion, it's better to house it with these Weeha bits instead of just your standard quarter inch. But even though these are going to be a lot more common i think you can get uh you're able to pack more with you uh with, for less weight with these double hot double-sided wee hot bits okay so now let's see how it's going to fit in the cases i've got the leatherman surge uh case here and i got a leatherman charge uh plus tti here so first thing we want to check is how the fitment is on the smaller pocket and obviously it's not going to fit in that way because it just doesn't provide enough friction to hold it in. If we go the other way on the Leatherman Surge case, that actually fits quite nicely. It doesn't quite extend to the bottom of the uh, elastic, but nonetheless. Now, if we flip it around to the opposite side, this one surprisingly fits really snugly in this case. So actually I could probably, I don't know why you would do it, but you could actually carry both of those in there quite, quite securely. Uh, there's a lot of friction there. So th this actually fits really well into the surge case on the second uh, on the second elastic over there. So now let's try it out with uh, the more common sheath. That's going to be the charge or wave sheath. Well, actually, I don't think the wave, I can't remember if the wave has that side pocket or not. So again, the same problem going that direction. This is a, quite a bit tighter on this side. 
So it fits pretty much the same. You can kind of see where the height is there. I think once you have stretched this out in your case a little bit, so it's you know going in and out of here more frequently, it's going to expand a little bit or better form to it. And so still it is not above the top there. So it'll carry okay in that direction. And then if we flip it over to the other side, uh, I think I actually like it better on this side. And it fits pretty much like that surge case does. And then once it's sitting in there too, the bottom of the, of your uh, extension actually stops up against the bottom of the sheath just a little bit. So I think it's going to be a comfortable carry. Now let me, let's do it with the, that double sided wee hop bit because that one sticks out a little further. And we'll see how much of a difference that makes. The problem with this is because it doesn't have as good of retention, this is something that you'd want to carry. You wouldn't want to carry it upside down. You'd want to carry it in this orientation. And you can see that I don't like that, the way that carries in this way. Because the other way, the ratchet mechanism is higher up top, and so you got more elastic to hold it for you know fear of slipping out of there. This way, it can bypass because uh, obviously the uh, the adapter piece here where it's going to adapt into your into your multi-tool is not catching on the bottom so it doesn't provide any kind of stop and then if we go the other way really the only option that we have is to put it in this direction now that's actually not too bad uh because then the bit has something to stop up against so that one i could probably be okay with you can get it in there and it's it's fairly secure we'll try that again in the surge sheath here and see if that's any different uh again actually they're probably pretty much the same well the thing with the surge sheath, sheath is though uh it hits the top of the elastic long before it gets to the bottom of the case so i don't know how well i would trust that for myself i think probably i am going to carry it over here like so uh because the surge the surge elastic is a lot deeper to where well i guess it's not that much deeper i don't know why it seems to be holding in there quite a bit better than it did on the other side or on the other case this one just seems looser that that one actually slips in there a lot easier than what it does on the surge case so uh maybe it's just uh you know a slight variation that i have in the cases maybe normal cases or other cases or other sheaths might be a little bit tighter on that elastic so it might be fine but the thing of it is uh it's feasible to carry it with you uh, i thought maybe because this was oversized it might be a, a little bit of an issue but i'm actually i'm actually okay with this one even on this side it still holds in there pretty well and that elastic is still helping to hold that we hop it in there a little bit so the price tag on this was $30, and I want to give you what my initial impressions of this are. So first of all, for overall functionality, for just, you know, obviously we were only be able to test it on that inch and a quarter wood screw, but it felt really solid putting that in, and it didn't have any issue whatsoever driving that screw in. Now, will that hold up over time? Well, there's only one way to tell, and that's really to just abuse it we're gonna i'm gonna do a series of testing where i'm just gonna put it through what i would consider normal work uh running through various different screws and and uh you know hex heads and just various little stuff and then if it holds up well through all of that then i'm planning on really trying to take this thing to its limits to see what it actually can handle now i do have a couple of areas of concern though uh i was kind of disappointed that it has so much play uh i thought that was going to be a little bit less actually i didn't think it was going to have that much play does that affect the functionality i don't i don't know that it, it did i didn't really feel it when i was uh driving that screw so as far as that goes i think maybe i might be nitpicking it a little bit what i do have a problem with though or it's not exactly a problem it's because when this thing is out of the tool this mechanism to switch over from forward to reverse is a little tight now once it's in the tool where it's in its holder uh, obviously that becomes a lot easier it's another thing is is when it's in its uh when it's in it, its uh, locked position that there's a little bit more play in it than i would like to have it's probably going to be half of that arc swing so probably four degrees in either direction is what we're looking at you can kind of see how much play is in that again it didn't seem to affect it 
I'll, as I was using it, but I didn't. I also didn't test it in the lock position, so that's one other thing to keep in mind. Overall, my impressions are pretty good of this thing, though. Uh, it, we're really not going to know until uh, I get it out there and really put it through its paces to see what it can handle. But at $30, uh, well, Blade HQ had them on sale for about $5 cheaper. They were $25 at Blade HQ, but then again, they sold out fairly quickly as well. So at $25 is a little bit of value. Uh, at $30, because of the fact that it it is designed to fit and work with the Leatherman tools, and I'm sorry for your free P2 and P4 owners, that uh, they elected in, in Leatherman's infinite wisdom not to put the bit driver in there, that uh, this sadly is not an option for you unless you're going to go in the aftermarket and get a bit holder for your multi-tool. But for the rest of us who carry Wave Surge, Charge, uh, any number of other multi-tools that have the bit uh the bit exchanger this i think is going to be a very very good tool for us my name is ben you've been watching the texas tool crib and my overview of the leatherman ratchet driver so far my impression is pretty good of this thing but tomorrow i'm going to start testing this thing out and then we're going to know exactly what it can handle i appreciate you watching and i'll see you in the next one